takes to finish out our quest. Howdy, I'm Jackson Burns, I'm the Redneck Archaeologist, and we're going to be talking to you today uh, about the buried cannons that are buried everywhere, uh, including the twin sisters' cannons that Dr. Graves and five other men, including a black Confederate soldier, buried in Harrisburg that we've been after for about six and a half years now. Uh, in addition to those, there are several more cannons that's been buried all over Texas and other places. And we'll go into that right now. On uh, February the 21st, 1862, the Valverde unit, uh, what they called, uh, was taken over basically McCray. The Yankee uh, brigade was taken. Uh, by Confederate soldiers in New Mexico. Uh, and there was five guns, three six-pounders, and two 12-pound howitzers that were taken uh, from the Yankees. And that was over, that was under Sibley General's, or Sibley's uh, campaign to the Trans-Pecos, I believe it was, the Trans-Texas campaign to go into to New Mexico Arizona and away into California to serve uh, the Knights of the Golden Circles. The uh, idea of making a full circle of the United States and part of the Caribbean nations, including Cuba and other islands of Mexico and Brazil and so on, uh, South America. And that was the Golden Circle up through the north, all of the south and so on. And that would be uh, there were at least 150 and possibly 400 or so uh, Knights of the Golden Circle members that went with General Sibley to New Mexico. And one of them was Trevanion Teal, T-E-E-L. And he was a lieutenant and he was one of the men who actually captured the McCrae's Yankee Brigade, and that, with that later became the uh, Valverde unit. We were trying to get out of New Mexico. Uh, they were hit by some Colorado volunteers, and they lost 70 supply wagons that the volunteers burned. And then they lost uh, 500 mules and horses that they drove off and kept and are killed. So with everything going, I mean, everything was gone from the Confederates. They lost everything. Uh, they, did have, they, they kept the guns. They were in a different location, of course. But they lost their clothes. They lost personal items. They lost you know, food. And they were starving. And so they, they made it back to Albuquerque. And in Albuquerque, uh, they buried the cannons. And on April the 11th, in northeast uh, corner of Albuquerque Plaza, uh, and that was on a Friday, April the 11th, 1862, I guess it was, uh, they actually buried the cannons. Uh, they buried eight cannons. Um, and uh, later on, Trevanion Till, who was a KGC member and uh, actually a lawyer, at that time in uh, both San Antonio and El Paso uh, had met a fellow over there and they decided to recover him and that was on August 18th, 1889 that Trevanya Teal came back and recovered those cannons. Now three other cannons are missing and they're buried somewhere between San Antonio and New Mexico. That would be the Valverde unit. Now you ask me where I'm going with this. Well, um, we have evidence that there were some Confederates that were associated with the Knights of the Golden Circle, buried cannons before the war was over. That's the Civil War. Well, 
Captain Joseph Sawyers took over the Valverde unit. Teal had his own command. <clears throat> and Captain Joseph Sawyers took over with his lieutenant was T.D. Nettles. Now, Nettles was also a member of the Knights of the Golden Circle. Uh, Nettles later became captain uh, after Sawyers was wounded. But, uh, these, they were used at the Battle of Galveston uh, with the support as a support at Virginia Point, uh, Galveston, Texas. Now this gives us a clear connection between the Knights of the Golden Circle and the Battle of Galveston. Now as we said, whether uh, Dr. Graves was Knights of the Golden Circle, we never really know. We know he was a Mason. A lot of these men were, uh, but they were also tied into other things, and a lot of Masons were Knights of the Golden Circle back at that time. All right, these cannons, the Valverde unit then moved on to Louisiana, and they fought several battles over there, winning. They actually stopped the uh, Yankee advance at Mansfield, at the Battle of Mansfield, and turned them back. And so at the end of the war, they were ordered to go back to San Antonio and deliver the cannons there uh, to the Yankees uh, at the Alamo, which is where they actually captured way back when General McCullough and 150 Knights of the Golden Circle members captured the Alamo the Armory uh, in 1861 at the very beginning of the Civil War. And if you go in there, you'll see one of my videos that actually shows uh, the Knights of the Golden Circle uh, had marked certain areas of the Alamo with code and inscriptions, uh, which were discovered right about the same time I started this search uh, for the Twin Sisters. Now, instead of taking these cannons back, Nettles decided, T.D. Nettles decided, we'll bury these things at Fairfield. And they went in, they buried four cannons inside a carriage house, a, a, a buggy house. And uh, they buried them in the floor. And basically, uh, there was four of them that they buried. Four guns, there was, oh, let's see. There was actually, they were mentioned two months after Lee surrendered on June 1st, 1865, which is very close to the same time that Graves and men buried the twin sisters. So now we're getting a tie-in of where not only were the same type of uh, uh, armory used, at, or, or there's a tie-in now between uh, not only the KGC, the Battle of Galveston, the troops in Galveston, but also a burial, the same way of getting rid of them to hide them from the, the Yankees. So that was both and at the same time. So we're still looking about the same time. This is two months after Lee's surrender in June of 1865. Anyhow, it was mentioned uh, in the Confederate records. It says Captain Nettles has four guns uh, on way to San Antonio. Anyhow, they were recovered later, years later in the 1800s. Uh, and one was sent to the Johnson Sayers uh, Nettles uh, Camp Number 10, 12 Sons of the Confederate Veterans, where it still remains today. And the second was dug up and moved to the Freestone Camp Courthouse, where it remains to this day. Now, two miles below Frenchwood, Texas, uh, dredge digging uh, in Clear Lake in 1809, uh, they snagged an antiquated, antiquated a cannon and they say in this newspaper article that it was a very very old cannon they thought it was one of the twin sisters and that was at Clear Creek two miles south of Friendswood Texas which does not put us anywhere as close to any where even being you know, in relation to, to the twin sisters so 
I don't know who thought that one up, but that was newspaper reporters, and that's why we're having a lot of misconceptions with what we're doing now with the Twin Sisters. Uh, another time, a riverboat captain stepped off a boat at the battlefield of San Jacinto in 1837 uh, to take a piss and basically stepped on a cannon. And they recovered that cannon and they used it uh, for several years as ballast on that boat. And then Mary Bo Lamar has some lost cannons in Texas, also that was probably buried or lost in creek crossings or whatnot. And Santa Ana also has some several lost cannons, including, I believe, the Gold Standard, uh, the 12 pounder. There's uh, that actually has been located, uh, but the landowners won't let them dig it up. Uh, some lawyer. Anyhow, Jackson Burns. I'm signing off on the cannons.